All right, here we are for a June 14th update. The plant is continuing to look really good. Really happy with how the plant looks. Haven't had to do too much watering because uh, we're still not even in the 80s, but uh, it's still just moving along okay. Um, I'm gonna do some uh, pruning and a little bit of vine bearing. And here's the 1634 Rhea plant. Uh, also looking really good, starting to stretch out, getting close to the wind fence there. I think um, we're gonna have to extend the wind fence at this point, maybe just go to the full, the full width. Um, for those that aren't aware, when we talk about pruning, one of the things that we're doing is we're taking off this tertiary growth right here. And all you do is just pinch it between your fingers and that would turn into a whole nother node and, and vine like this. And really we just wanna keep the main leader and each of these secondaries. So number of secondaries before we set the pumpkin um, is an important number. And basically the total length of plant, which is basically how much plant you're gonna have pushing uh, the pumpkin once the pumpkin is pollinated and set. And um, my goal is something greater than 15 secondaries, probably closer to 20. Um, and right now we're sitting at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven have started and deep in there there's a pumpkin which could be the one so seven on this side seven on that side is 14 roughly um, and then you got you know quite a few in the bundle before the pumpkin comes out so that could put us pretty much right at the number that we're going for um, and that would probably put the pumpkin you know somewhere just on the other side of where this fence is right now and that would be probably perfect so we'll see how that unfolds. So I'm gonna do some pruning and some vine bearing now. So for making up the vine bearing mix, what I like to do is just kind of go to the edge of the patch, long way away from where the pumpkin is, because you'd be surprised at how far those roots are actually reaching out. And I just fork over the soil a little bit, it gives me a chance to see what the moisture level is. And then just scoop some into a bucket and then go back into the patch with the with the kneeling boards and and bury up the vines so here i'm at the 2350 ginger and this is kind of what i'm doing for vine variants we're just taking a little bit of that soil dropping it right there on the node and just kind of making sure that it's covering it and i'm not i'm trying to bury less aggressively this year just because I had these issues last year with uh, too much organic matter and the sort of fungus and development. So that's about it. And then once that roots, I'll actually brush some of the top off just to get the soil off the vine, but try and have some of the vine showing between and then just dust off the, the leaves that picked up some dirt and that's about it. And then repeat like a million times. All right, the plants have outgrown their wind fence, their mini wind fence, and now the wind fence is in its sort of full size. So they're gonna take on a little bit of wind in the short term, but if things go to plan, they'll start filling out the space pretty quick. So they got room to grow. We'll just keep training these back vines back into this corner before we terminate, and as we go forward, just moving them out straight. And one thing I'm gonna try this year that's a little bit different is rather than putting a arc in the tip where the pumpkin is before pollinating, uh, we're gonna pollinate the pumpkin and then terminate the main vine and allow the last set of secondaries to grow out and the tertiaries will, will cover in the sort of final area out in front. Sort of a, imagine a pitchfork laying on the ground. So you have sort of Christmas tree pattern back here and then the pumpkin and then everything in front of it will just be coming off of the tertiaries in a sort of pitchfork pattern. The uh, little cracks that we had 
you can see where I cut that secondary off. Still something to be a little nervous about, but it really has calloused over pretty good and is very solid. So I'm okay about, feeling okay about it. A little bit of crack here. Um, and the other plant has something that's a little bit more worrisome. It has a crack. Um, it just formed on its own. So kind of is what it is. We're just gonna have to, not much you can do. Here's hopefully the pumpkin that we end up growing, sitting right there in the tip. So this one back here is probably one we don't want to go with, uh, just because the plant won't be big enough. But this one might be just about in the perfect spot. It's June 21st and we're Still burying vines. And a uh, short story is pollination is likely going to be pushed out a few days, even as much as a week. I'll show you the pumpkins that we're likely targeting. Just the plants are still not big enough. Um, overall, plant health is, is okay. This plant is the one that I was mentioning has a vine split issue right here which looks really pretty bad and it kind of continues to split. Uh, we don't really have risk of moisture and rot here, just being such a dry Mediterranean arid climate. But, uh, you know, obviously losing that volume and if it keeps splitting, it's not an ideal situation. So I'm being extra thorough with the vine bearing around it. I know I've seen others that have uh, you know, grown pumpkins with with no crown at all. So, you know, if that section, like, imagine it completely severed itself from the rest of the plant. If you're rooted along the main there, you can still grow a pumpkin. Um, you know, it's not something you would ideally hope for, but that is a possibility if it gets that bad. Hopefully it won't. Hopefully it'll kind of scar up and stay about as bad as it is there, but we'll have to just keep monitoring it. So on the 1634 Rhea, we have this pumpkin right here as an option, and this pumpkin right here as an option. And this would be right around 18 secondaries behind it. So a little less than ideal, but probably enough considering some of the other issues that I was showing you that I think I just want to get it pollinated and get it going. Over here on the 2350 Ginger plant is more traditional uh, pattern. Got a little arc started and that would probably be the pumpkin we would like to go with. This pumpkin back here was pollinated a couple days ago or day ago and it's just too far back and not enough for the secondaries pushing behind it. Um, we'll let it get going and just make sure that it pollinated just to kind of see the shape and how things look. But either this guy here or the one right there in the pack uh, will be the one. And that will do something similar. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So somewhere, somewhere around 17, 18 uh, secondaries if we go with that one. If we go with the one up there, you know, it's probably an additional five days, uh, but you get another three or four secondaries. So we'll have to see. I've given in to the fact that we're not gonna have a, a pollination as early as we would have liked. And I think just chalking that up to the weather. I'm also taking a tissue, gonna have a tissue test done on, on the plant. So I took a, a stem about a foot before the pumpkin that we plan to pollinate or, or that has pollinated and we'll send to Western Laboratories to see what the nutrient uptake is or what the actual nutrient situation is. Right now, I'm just giving it water, no nutrients or anything like that, but uh, based on that result, it may adjust what we actually do.